So everyone had a good break, right? So let's talk numbers for a little bit. I'm not talking about salary negotiations or your BMI or presidential poll numbers, which, by the way, Rick Perry just dropped out for those of you who didn't catch your news. Um, <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. No, but uh, in all seriousness, um, numbers are everywhere. Everywhere. And numbers can even be a persona. So you could be a 10. You could be 007. You could even be Dr. Knows Henchman, Dr. Evil's Henchman, or you could be um, a zero. In this case, why did I choose numbers? I chose numbers because I've been compiling a list of the 100 most interesting things about me. I wanted to do it before I forgot them, because I'm getting older. And uh, doing it in 20 slides in five minutes is impossible. So I thought, well, what if I could use numbers? Maybe numbers could be a better way, a more interesting way of giving a representation of some of the interesting things in my life, those special moments, those passions that I have. And so here we go. We're going to give this a shot. So numbers can be very impactful, right? We know that today's 9-11. It's a day that lives in infamy. It was one of the darkest moments in our time, right? And it's tragic. But in some ways, this Ignite... Um, lecture notwithstanding, 9-11 could actually be a good day. In my case, it was the day that my community came together and rose up to help our neighbor up the street, which was Fort Belvoir, to help the people that were trapped and killed at the Pentagon. It was something called Operation Noble Eagle, and it made a real difference, and it brought our nation together. If you think about 9-11, it brought our nation together in a way that never has, probably hasn't since. So when you think about numbers, there are numbers that have dual meanings, right? So you could have a number like 720. <coughs> Happens to be my math SAT score. I'm doing a presentation around numbers, people. This is a big <laughs> surprise. It also happens to be, as a date, July 20th, a date that everybody in this room should be celebrating. Okay? It's the date that man landed on the moon. Okay? And so in 2000, I had a chance to meet that man, Neil Armstrong. It was one of the biggest moments of my life to shake his hand. But on that 720, I also had another you know, small step for man, biggest leap for mankind. In my case, 720 was the day that a neurologist told me that I had multiple sclerosis. That was 15 years ago. And I have to tell you, I feel great. I really do. And in a way, a strange way, it's been a gift because it ignited something in me, aside from an out-of-control immune system, it ignited something in a way that I wanted to give back to people because I could. And so I'm a serial volunteer. 875, here's another number, all right? So 875, as a date, this was when my, my parents told me that I was going to be a big brother. Yay. <laughs> I, I love my brother, but he's also uh, somebody that was sucking up all the oxygen in my life, and I wasn't really crazy about that. 875 also is the model of the best saxophone I ever played on, which is the Yamaha Custom Tenor Promotional Consideration Not Provided. Um, the Yamaha and the saxophone had such a big impact in my life. Uh, sort of soloing gave me the confidence to get up here and do something like this tonight, for example. It also had a big impact on my career. And um, I will tell you that um, <laughs> I had a chance to play in uh, Memphis, Tennessee with B.B. King and his house band. And the next night I got picked up by Governor Huckabee to play with his band at the Southern Governors Association Banquet. And honest to God, Governor Huckabee's band is called Capital Offense. So <laughs> I'm an honorary member of Capital Offense. If I had a decimal point uh, in 537 and 53.7, that's how fast I was going when I was ziplining with my brother in British Columbia. It's also about how fast I ski. And 53.7, 537 is also the highest score I ever had worked with friends, so I'm not just a numbers geek. <laughs> um, in doing research for this proposal, I came up with uh, something called Graham's number. And Graham's number is actually, apparently, the largest number that was ever cited. It was said that if you took all the matter in the universe and converted it to ink, there wouldn't be enough ink to write out that number. Well, when my wife and I were trying to figure out the name for our son, uh, we said, well, why don't we take the, you know, our two names and mash them together, Greg and Pam, we'll get Graham. We didn't think that we were creating something that was going to be uh, uh, indescribable. <laughs> um, but as uh, you all know, you can be a parent and you can have the most indescribable situations with your kids. They define logic, they define gravity. Um, when we get into some of the other numbers, uh, there's numbers that define with music, 
right? 8765309. Anybody in this room that's over 35 knows that number. Thank you, Jenny. Um, and you saw the other titles that were there. My point is, there are so many different ways that you can use numbers to describe things in your life. They say that if a picture is worth a thousand uh, uh, words, then perhaps a number could be worth a thousand pictures. The sleep number people are always telling us and asking us, what's your number? It's not a bad question to ask yourself tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs>